Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television and in this special presentation from inside the Parliament House Complex we'll bring to you the questions, uh, the unstarred ones which have been answered by the government. With me is my colleague Kriti Mishra. Thank you Vishal. So let's take our viewers through all the important questions, unstarred questions asked by the members of the Rajya Sabha and the answers given by the government. Well yes indeed uh, in uh, Today's uh, list of uh, questions, there are several from uh, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Ayush. So let's begin uh, with uh, some important questions from the Ministry of Finance. And in uh, one of the questions which have been asked by the member P. Bhattacharya from Congress, uh, he says uh, the details of the defaulting companies and individuals against whom non-performing assets of more than 10 crore and above are pending for recovery and the measures taken by government to streamline loan recovery policy and to evolve innovative method for recovery of NPAs and bad loans. Well, Vishal, reiterating what you said, that several important questions pertaining to Ministry of Finance were asked today, and certainly NPA is a matter of grave issue. So, answering to P. Bhattacharya's query, MOS Finance has said that the Reserve Bank of India has informed that there are around 4,387 borrowers with aggregate funded outstanding of 8,59,532 crore rupees related to non-performing assets of more than 10 crore rupees. RBI has also informed that the, under the provisions of Section 45E of the Reserve Bank of India Act, it is prohibited from disclosing credit information. Section 45E provides that credit information submitted by a bank shall be treated as confidential and not to be published or otherwise disclosed. A number of measures have also been taken, Vishal, to streamline loan recovery and introduce innovative methods to, for recovery of NPAs. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code has been enacted to create a unified framework for resolving insolvency and bankruptcy matters. So another important question pertaining to Ministry of Finance was asked by Saroj Pandey and she has asked about the number of new Jandan bank accounts open so far since the implementation of the Jandan Yojana by the government. Well, this has been uh, a very important scheme uh, which was now launched by the government and in fact, uh, in the answer, the finance ministry gives ahead uh, uh, the clear figures. It says that uh, till 11th of July 2018, uh, uh, the total number of Jandan accounts which are opened by the banks uh, was 32.02 crore. In that, one thousand one lakh rather seventy thousand two hundred and ninety two crore rupees was directly transferred in these accounts and the beneficiaries were during the financial year 2017 and 18 the ministry also goes on to say that these bank accounts however include but are not limited to Jandhan accounts. One another important question, Kriti, uh, here is uh, from Ripun Bora who has asked the government that whether it is a fact uh, that the government has introduced Mudra Yojana for business purposes for the unemployed persons of the country. Well, Vishal, true to its powerful tagline, funding the unfunded. Mudra has transformed the lives of many aspiring entrepreneurs and you remember we did a program as well on this particular scheme. So Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana provides access to institutional finance to unfunded micro small business units by extending loans up to rupees 10 lakh for manufacturing, processing, trading, services and activities allied to agriculture which help in creating income, generating activities and employment. Overdraft facility of up to 5,000 rupees under Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana is also covered under Mudra. In 2018-19 up to 13 July, 95,85,870 loans have been sanctioned so far. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a huge that's figure. That's a huge figure, Vishal, <laughs> certainly. And it is, as I told you, is transforming lives of many budding entrepreneurs. Okay. There was another important question that was asked by Sambhaji Chhatrapati. And he has asked whether the Benami Transaction Prohibition Amendment Act 2016 could contain illegal transaction of immovable properties. Well, uh, the answer from the government uh, clearly says, uh, Kriti, that uh, prohibition of Benami Property Transactions Act 1988, uh, as amended by the Benami Transic Transactions Prohibition Amendment Act 2016, seeks to prohibit the Benami transactions irrespective of the method by which the Benami property is acquired. Now, such Benami transactions include transactions in respect of movable as well as immovable properties. Uh, as on 30th uh, of June 2018, Provisional amendments have been made in more than 1,600 Benami transactions involving Benami properties valued at over 4,300 crore rupees. Another very important question uh, this time around uh, 
uh, is uh, from a member, uh, Chaya Verma, who goes on to ask the government whether it is a fact that demonetization, uh, rather after demonetization, less money is being put into the ATMs of the country at present, and the news of banks not having enough amount is also coming from time to time. This is a question which has been raised in public domain for quite some time, whether there was a shortage of money in the ATMs, uh, and the government at time and again explained that, that the banks have been uh, supplied with enough uh, you know, currency notes uh, to ensure that they are flowing in the market. Uh, well, that's right, Vishal. So the government has again refuted all claims and uh, alleged fears and the government has answered that the Reserve Bank of India has informed that the total notes in circulation is around 19.28 trillion in 2018 as compared to 17.74 trillion in 2016. RBI has ensured adequate supply of notes to meet the cash requirement of public and the currency supply is monitored continuously to ensure distribution of adequate currency to various parts of the country. RBI has further informed that as on date, there is sufficient stock of issuable notes in currency chests and with RBI for adequately meeting the cash demand of bank customers over the counter or through the ATMs. So certainly a very important declaration, a very important declaration through the answer that was given on the, in the Rajya Sabha today. Well, definitely reiterating the figures which have been there in the public domain earlier as well. Right. So there's another important question and this has been asked by Kumari Shelja. Uh, also by Shamshir Singh Dullo. And we are moving from Ministry of Finance to Ministry of Health now. Okay. So remember, Vishal, cancer is one of the leading causes of deaths in India with more than around 1,300 people succumbing to it every day. So certainly an issue of grave concern. And uh, uh, these members have asked the government whether the number of cancer patients is on the rise in the country and what is the government doing to arrest it? Well, uh, to this... Uh... Uh, the uh, Minister of uh, State for Health, uh, Anupriya Patel, has given an elaborate answer and uh, she goes on to say that uh, the number of cancer cases are increasing steadily in all parts of the country every year as per the National Cancer Registry data or ICMR, something which you were referring to, uh, Kriti. And uh, the Minister goes on to say that the central government supplements the efforts of the state government for improving health care, including prevention, diagnosis and treatment of cancer. The objectives of the National Programme for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and stroke being implemented under National Health Mission, that is NHM, for intervention up to district level includes awareness generation for cancer prevention, screening, early detection and referral to an appropriate level institution for treatment. Now the focus here is on three types of cancer, namely breast, cervical and oral cancer. So this uh, clearly explains the government's intent to go ahead and tackle this particular problem. Now, uh, one more question which has, uh, you know, come uh, today is uh, from uh, one of the members, Sanjay Seth, uh, who goes on to ask the government whether it has taken any steps in order to raise awareness about organ donation. Well, Vishal, organ donation in our country is abysmally low. Nonetheless, steps are being taken. So responding to this question, the government has said that various steps have been taken to promote organ donation in the country. So the government is implementing the National Organ Transplant Program to promote organ donation across the country. The National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization has a website that disseminates relevant information to all concerned. A 24-7 call center with a toll-free helpline number. And let me read out this number for our viewers. It is 1-800-114-770 has also been made operational. A number of activities are carried out for generating awareness and for imparting training to all those associated with transplant activities, including doctors and transplant coordinators. Okay, now, that's, that's, that's interesting. And before we move ahead, Kriti, I would like to, you know, reiterate uh, that helpline number for our viewers uh, in Hindi as well. Uh, uh, yeh number hai, ek aat shunne shunne, ek ek char saat saat shunne. So this is the number on which uh, anybody who has, uh, you know, any or needs any information with respect to uh, how to tackle cancer or how to approach, uh, you know, different uh, dispensaries, the government uh, hospitals uh, who can uh, help these patients uh, who are in need. But let's move on to the next one. Oh, well, so from health, we move on to Ayush now, a related ministry, of course. So Kirori Lal Meena has asked whether the government provides better health services to the elderly persons under Ayush treatment system. Well, uh, you know, this uh, goes on to have a very, again, a detailed answer from uh, the Minister uh, for Ayush, uh, Mr. Sharipad Yesu Nayak. And uh, 
The minister says that the Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences, an autonomous organization under Ministry of Ayusha, is providing health services to the elderly persons through its 23 cl clinical units. That's special units uh, located throughout the country. Central Council for Research in Homeopathy, an autonomous organization under, again, Ministry of Ayusha, is providing health services to the elderly persons through its 23 research centers and eight peripheral outpatient departments that is OPDs located throughout the country. The Central Council for Research in Siddha, an autonomous organization, again under the Ministry of Ayush, is also providing the special outpatient services on this matter. So uh, from here, let's now move on to another topic, another ministry, and that is the Ministry of Minority Affairs, where uh, Javed Ali Khan goes on to ask the government, uh, and he has uh, inquired about institutions engaged in the upliftment of minorities uh, in the country. So Minority Affairs Minister Mukhtar Abbas Nakwi has given an elaborate answer and he lists specifically uh, that there are institutions who are engaged in the upliftment and safeguarding uh, minorities including the linguistic minorities and these are National Minorities Development and Finance Corporation, the Maulana Azad Education Foundation, National Commission for Minorities, the Special Officer for Linguistic Minorities appointed by the President under Article 350B of the Constitution, Central Waqf Council and Hajj Committee of India. Now moving on to another important ministry which is Ministry of Power. Well, yes. And Harsh Vardhan Singh Dungarpur has asked whether it is a fact that the supply of power is less five times as compared with demands of power in the country. Well, that's a, indeed an important question, and uh, specifically in uh, during the summer months. Uh, and uh, the ministry's answer to this is uh, that the installed generation capacity is about 344 gigawatt, which is more than sufficient to meet the peak power demand of around 170, that is 170 gigawatt, occurred during the current year, that is 2018-2019, up to June 2018. As such, sufficient power is available in the country to meet the demand of power and state can purchase power through various market mechanisms including power exchanges to meet any gap in demand and supply. So there are enough mechanisms uh, through which the state governments go ahead, can go ahead and augment their, uh, you know, uh, demand, uh, their, their particular stock uh, to meet the demand during the summer months specifically. So these are the questions today, Kriti. Oh, that's right, Vishal. These were important questions and, of course, the important answers given by the government. So that's all we have in this edition of Question Hour. Prashankal with our colleagues, Arvind Kumar Singh and Akhilesh Suman on the other side. Stay tuned.